All right, welcome everybody. Today we're going to talk about dealing with one's need for validation. As you might know, I have decided to dedicate this channel purely to the practice of Game B. What does this mean? I talked about it in another video. Game B is the game we must play if we want to enter the new stage of civilization uh, where it's all about abundance and about doing what is intrinsically meaningful and intrinsically rewarding and this is what I'm going to try to do here so I'm not doing something in order to get something else in return but now I'm faced with a little bit of a dilemma because okay I've gotten rid of the money making aspect uh, this right now right here is not an entrepreneurial approach or at least I'm consciously making the effort of ignoring those wishes and focusing on something different. But there are still other things about this YouTube, this public discourse that I'm pursuing that can pollute the effort. And this is all the extrinsic rewards that I could get, like views, likes, comments, popularity, influence. In other words, all the validation that I could get. Let's say I don't get any money from this, but there is still the risk that I kind of use this as a way to satisfy my desire for validation. And so what other way to deal with this than to approach the problem directly? So let's try to solve this problem of validation. What is it? Why, where does it come from? And how should one deal with it in a meaningful way? And here I find myself a bit in a paradox. If we want to understand what validation is and function, there are kind of two ways to look at it, two fundamentally different ways. And it's not clear which one is the right one. So one could talk about this this way. So are we people deserving of unconditional love or is the right type of love somehow conditional? Should you love yourself unconditionally or not? The answer is not obvious. Let's look at the conditional love paradigm first. So the conditional love paradigm is based on the idea that there is a hierarchy of human beings. So there are people up higher, there are people down lower, and obviously it's better to be on top. And so the worthiness of love depends on where you are on the hierarchy. So you're worthy of love because you are remarkable. Now, if you are in this paradigm, basically what you're looking for is social status, prestige, admiration, respect. And if we bring it back to me, in a sense, the influence that I'm trying to build here on YouTube is in line with this aspect. And so the question is, is this wrong? And how can I kind of overcome this? And this brings us to the lobsters. <laughs> I don't know if you have read Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, but in chapter number one, he talks about lobsters and about how even among lobsters, there are hierarchies. So this is a deeply biological, deeply rooted component of life. And so it's for sure going to be hard to give up on this paradigm if we want to do so. But the question, the first question we should ask is, should we give up on this paradigm? Is this whole idea of a hierarchy of human beings something that should belong to the past? And Jordan Peterson talks about this in the same chapter we mentioned. And he mentions the fact that any kind of value systems generates a hierarchy automatically, a hierarchy of people who are more or less successful at embodying those values. And so the question is, should we not admire the people who embody our values the best? That, again, that's, that is linked to should we feel loved no matter what? And as much as we hear you shouldn't care what other people think, I'm wondering whether that's the case. Maybe you should. Maybe there is something of value within the, that dynamic. But I believe there is a deeper way of thinking about this. And I'm speculating. So what is it that allows lobsters to feel dominance? It's this molecule called serotonin. And interestingly enough, MDMA is a drug that does exactly that, that releases all the serotonin that you have uh, and basically depletes it. One and a half years ago, I've tried it in a normal domestic setting and, and I've spent a few hours contemplating that experience. The interesting aspect of that is that what it feels like to be a winner in the conditional love game fits completely in the unconditional love paradigm. And this is the paradox. When your brain is immersed in serotonin, you feel a deep sense of enoughness, of absolute self-acceptance, 
of deep invulnerability. What I mean is that there is some kind of core within you that cannot be hurt, that is intact. And also an interesting consequence about this is that you feel the same about other people. You feel an absolute acceptance of other people. And so suddenly you're completely outside of this game of, of hierarchies, right? Like all people belong to the same kind of family. And so there is a paradox, right? Why, why do the winners of this hierarchy game feel in the deepest way that there is no hierarchy. Let's add some observations. This feeling is something that one can attain also in normal circumstance if one is able to self-soothe or feel self-compassion or basically tell oneself it's okay. And another way of achieving that is when you share your vulnerable, your shameful aspects with someone and that person accepts you and tells you it's okay, I have the same, or I felt the same, or it's understandable you would feel that way. So another type of validation, if you will. I want to talk about an experience I had. My grandfather died when I was six, and uh, last year I went to my grandmother and I saw this place where his urn is, and I had a feeling of him watching, you know, that, that kind of feeling It's obviously a psychological thing but this feeling of benevolence of him wanting the best for me was an extremely strong feeling of healing of okayness of um, of self-acceptance that reminded me of the experience i had with mdma for example and so the question is this kind of psychological source this this non-external source of self-acceptance this father in the sky right that uh, made me feel like i'm okay um is that something that we could access maybe more often? Um, that's, that's a question. So if we think about this paradigm, there are kind of two types of feelings that we're talking about. One feeling is you are special and the other is you are enough. And I have a suspicion that the you are special feeling is actually an illusion. Let's, let's make a drawing. So you feel at a certain point that you are not enough, you are down here and other people are over here. And so because you feel that there are these layers between people, you wish you were up here. You wish you could do the jump. But the problem is, and I don't know if you've ever felt that, when you are actually able to do that, it doesn't feel that good either. At least in my case, my experience is that I feel how others are now feeling somehow inferior towards me. And that's not a good feeling either. And so the you are special feeling is a bit of an illusion. And when you are in this superior hierarchical place, you actually would wish the others wouldn't feel inferior to you. And then there is another circumstance which is different, which is this. You feel inferior and you kind of expose this and show it to the people above you. And what they do is they, they pull you up and they allow you to be part of something that suddenly feels like a family. And that's the actual feeling that feels good. And then the question is, why, why shouldn't we always feel this way? Why? That, that's the question I asked myself when I took MDMA. I felt this kind of wisdom of, we are all the same and we can just, we are all equally worthy. We just have maybe different needs and we need to sort through those needs. And there is no, problem that is actually a threat we just have to sort through them and uh, i felt this kind of sense of safety of okayness but um, it didn't impair my capacity to solve problems and i was wondering why why shouldn't we always feel this way so are we deserving of unconditional love one question perhaps we could ask is unconditional love worth anything would we appreciate unconditional love i think i have an idea that could solve this Let, let's go back to drawing so imagine that here is the sun and the sun obviously has this this feature this strong symbolism of universal unconditional love right so the sun shines the same way on anyone and now you are here at this point the question is what can modify your capacity to receive that love think about it this way if your eye is oriented in this direction then you won't receive the love that is coming from the sun but if your eye is oriented in this direction then you will actually be able to receive that love and this is interesting because it kind of deconstructs the the idea of unconditional love right like is it unconditional in a sense yes and in another sense no because you cannot receive it if you're not kind of open to receiving it and the interesting clever thing about this drawing is that to be able to receive it is correspondent with kind of looking at it and aiming at it. And I think that's, that's the, the key. 
Let's make it more real. Let's say that the sun symbolizes everything that is good and you want everything that is good, this love. And the only way to get it is to aim at it. So love is unconditional, but you can only receive it if love is what you aim at. So you are special if you aim for the good. You are enough if you aim for the good. It's interesting because it is a condition, but it is a simple condition. It's something that you can achieve right now just by adjusting your aim. That's something that you can do immediately, instantly. It's your aim is the source of everything else. But then we need to remember still that the feeling that we have of being loved unconditionally is not available to everyone. It's not available all the time. It is something that comes only through serotonin and so on. And serotonin has certain biological mechanisms and it comes through validation. And we cannot escape biology. We do need validation. So the conclusion is of this is that on one side, we now know what is what makes people worthy of love. It's basically the fact that they are aiming towards it, towards the good. And on the other hand, we know that certain people, including maybe yourself, don't receive it because people eventually are the ones who are able to reward people for that. So there's still the possibility of a discrepancy between people aiming for the good and them then feeling that unconditional love, which brings our responsibility into play, our responsibility as the human family. So we have a responsibility to look for the good in people, including ourselves, and validate it by extending a hand and welcoming them to the human family. And this is, I think, the most healthy approach to validation. So you, you should make sure that you are oriented towards the good, and then you should make sure that either yourself or someone close to you can validate you for that. And so let's go back to my YouTube problem. So how can I approach this? So there is no question that YouTube can be used for good, that there can be a good impact. And so what is the best approach that I can have here? Here is a tentative plan. So that number one is when I wake up in the morning and I'm planning to make a video to be mindful of my true intentions. Am I doing something to get the likes, to get the appreciation, to get the validation? If yes, then I need to reorient myself, go back and point towards the thing that is intrinsically meaningful, intrinsically good. And then, since I might still have that lack, that feeling of a hole that I need to fill in one way or another, to take care of myself and validate these good intentions that I have. And perhaps if I don't manage to do it, to seek help, to look for a friend or someone who actually appreciates that I'm trying to do something good. And then finally, to go ahead and share from a place of enoughness, of abundance, of intrinsic meaning. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. See you another time.